Okay, I'm doing an update video. It's 6.30 in the morning, so it's right before I go to work. So as you can see, I'm in my uniform. I'll go up a little bit. See, US Air Force, go team. Okay, so um, let's see a couple things. I have my yearly checkup with my endo on the 17th of January, which is tomorrow. Right now they have me on 137 for Synthroid, so I'm wondering if it's going to get lowered, upped, I don't know. Um, this is usually the time that they do like the uh, blood drawing for the thyroglobin, whatever it's called. I don't know if that's going to happen this time around. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's just very, very, very interesting to to do the yearly checkups instead of the the more frequent ones that I used to be used to so um, I just received word right before Christmas that I will be moving to Germany again so I'm going back to where I basically got diagnosed and treated back to Germany um, due to military so we are supposed to be there in May, so we're leaving New Mexico around April. I'm um, going to stop in the D.C. area to visit family and friends and then fly to Germany and spend four years there. So I'm kind of excited. I'm ready to go. I can't be at a base for too long. I start to get antsy. So I just wanted to just let people know that it sucks having no thyroid because like I am very much a person that doesn't show what it does to me like I kind of I like to say put on my mask of happiness and like everything's kosher but like deep down inside I'm just screaming like I'm tired I just want to take a nap after an hour of being here at work it's like I want to go home I don't want to be here anymore so it's very hard to adjust to a normal life. But at the same time, I don't want people to give me the pity party. I don't want people to feel sorry for me because I don't feel sorry for me. I I don't know. I just, like I said, I put, a, put on this mask, like, shut the fuck up. Let's do this. And, you know, it's funny because not a lot of people realize that I'm sick until... They meet me, or, you know, they get to know me, and then they're like, all right, well, here, I'll show you. What's that on your neck? And then I'll say, oh, I had thyroid cancer. So how was your day today? <laughs> I, I just kind of do something like that, and people are, like, in awe. Like, what the hell? <laughs> well, what happened? They want to know more. and So basically, I don't bring up that I'm a thyroid cancer survivor until... Um, until they ask me about the scar. Otherwise, I don't talk about it. And that's why people are shocked. They just sit there like, damn, girl. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, that's just one aspect of life. Um, my little ones are, let me see, they turn 29 months this, no, next week. So they're in the two and a half realm now. They're both walking, both talking, both, they're like two different people and it's amazing to see them, how they've, how much they've grown. She's my little talker and mimicker. She repeats everything you say, so if you say a curse word, yeah, my fault. <laughs> um, and my little man, he is my destructive one. He likes to climb things, he likes to run, he likes to knock things over, throw toys on top of toys. Like, he has this monster truck, and literally he'll just be like, bah, 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 bah. it's funny to watch. Um, yeah, and they're doing really well. They, It's a lot of work to have twins, but at the same time, it's all I know. So I don't know anything else. I don't know what it's like to have uh, one and then go to twins, or twins and then one, but it's like, People are always asking me, is it harder? I don't know. To me, it's normal. But maybe to other people, they'd be like, I can't do that. Well, 
I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. What else? What else? I was a little upset with the whole, uh, I know Brooke Burke came out and did her little thyroid cancer announcement and everyone was like up in arms about um, how she, her doctors referred it as the easy cancer and happily ever after once she's cured and then um, I guess after she had the surgery she didn't need, need la, 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 I can't talk, she didn't need to do the, the radioactive iodine treatment so she's cured. And a lot of people are angry about that. My thing is, thyroid cancer already has that stigma of the easy cancer. So at this point, a celebrity getting it, it's not going to change anything. Everyone's going to always be like, if this is the cancer to get, get thyroid cancer. Like, just do it. But, I, I don't know. Uh, at this point, I can give two shits. I've lived with it since 2008 and when I was diagnosed, so it's something I deal with every day, whether it's a good day or a bad day. She'll learn. They all will learn. Everybody at first gets that, okay, I got this, I can do this, but then you start to hit the bumps and the curves and, you know, some people unfortunately get reoccurrences or something else happens and they freak the fuck out. I mean for me it went from being diagnosed with thyroid cancer, having the surgery, and right before having my radioactive iodine treatment I find a lump on my left, no, was it right breast? I can't even remember now. And they're like yeah we're gonna do a biopsy on that and that freaked me the fuck out because I was like, what the hell now? Am I getting breast cancer too? Luckily that didn't happen, but once upon a time when I had my first biopsy on my thyroid, they told me it was benign. And when they told my when they told me the results of my breast was benign, I was like, I don't give a fuck. Take that shit out. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> and when I got to uh, New Mexico here, in uh, 2009, I got that shit removed because I was like, yeah, once upon a time I was told my thyroid uh, lump was benign and then it turned cancerous. So I'm not going through that shit again. Um, yeah. As you can see, I could still serve in the military with my uh, previous diagnosis because um, they like to, they do a medical evaluation board on people that get diagnosed with any type of illness, whether it's cancer or whatever. And um, I basically had to prove that I can still do my job with what life has dealt me. And because of that, they decided to, okay, she could stay in the military. And I've done they do yearly checkups where they look at my records to see if it has an eff affected my career in any way, if I have too many appointments or if my levels have been checked and I'm just like extreme. However, wherever I get stationed at from now on has to have an endocrinologist. I cannot go somewhere and there's not an endocrinologist. Otherwise, they're like, no. So in my records, it specifically says wherever she goes has to have an endocrinologist. So. I guess that's a perk, but it sucks because then, you know, you get used to one endo and then you move to a new base and then you got to get used to a new endo. And for me in the military, I don't really have a choice where I can go. They tell me where to go. So I go. If they tell me, okay, you're going to see this endo, but then there's another endo in the area that I really want to go to, I can't do that. Once they pick the endo for me, that's I'm stuck. So for all you people that have a choice and and not have to serve like I do, <laughs> good on you. <laughs> when I signed that contract, I gave my life away and that's okay, like I'm happy to serve. I love what I do and I do it because I'm proud. Like I don't, yeah. So I always tell my husband like, my career unfortunately is number one, my family's number two because when the military says, hey, you're gonna go here, I'm like, okay, word, I'm off. <laughs> I really don't have a say, but that's what I do, and I'm proud to do it, and yeah. Alright, I think I'm done, because 
It is 6.45 and I need to finish uh, getting dressed. I don't have my uh, boots on. So <laughs> I need to go get my boots on and yeah, I will talk to you later. Bye. Cheese.